This is the mugshot for Stephanie Peterson. Yesterday, deputies say the teen told his parents about his relationship, which started back in November. And as News 6 reporter Lauren Korn found out, Peterson would even make visits to the teen's home. The school district says the woman was a science teacher for the last one and a half years before resigning on Monday after deputies say she had an improper relationship with a student. Peterson is here for uh, first appearances. Um, uh, the judge for uh, for this process uh, reviewed the uh, arrest warrant. I uh, reviewed the underlying uh, police report that was provided to the judge that issued the warrant. Uh, I will find there's a factual basis <coughs> for the charges. There's two counts of losing the city's battery, and there's a count of transmission of harmful materials via electronic device to a minor. Of course, I'm not going to appoint a public defender. Counsel, do you want to identify yourself in the record? Morning, Honor. Aaron Delgado. Okay. Uh, you know, the bond that came in on the arrest warrant uh, was uh, previously set a total of 25000 uh, Again, as I said, I found there was probable cause for the three counts at this point in time. And we don't dispute that based on the judge's warrant. All right. Do you have any uh, uh, position about the uh, status of the of the bond, either defense or state? I do, Your Honor. Uh, so we'd be asking the court to ROR her to pretrial services with the conditions uh, that are similar to those endorsed in the bond. Uh, the warrant. The, the only modification would be the no contact with children that are not related to her by essentially blood or marriage, i.e. family members. But you know, the, the, the purpose of bond is to safeguard against flight risk and to ensure her appearance in court. She's represented by counsel. She's never failed to appear. No prior criminal history. Those are all factors that mitigate in favor of pretrial release. And of course, the statute favors release on non-monetary conditions. Uh, you know, as I've expressed previously to the court, you know, m money was not the primary concern. We resolved those other concerns. We would be asking the court to simply endorse that she follow all professional recommendations she receives and take all medications she may be prescribed as prescribed. But we feel that pretrial release is appropriate at this point. I think pretrial services may have spoken to her. I don't know if they had a position, but we're going to be asking for her to be released on her own cognizance to pretrial release. Again, no flight his history, no prior criminal history, lengthy community ties, substantial community ties. And, uh, you know, frankly, ideal candidate for pretrial services. State, do you have a position on this? Um, Judge, uh, given the facts as contained in the 707, the uh, facts are fairly egregious at this point in time. The state would argue that the bonds as set are reasonable. Uh, would ask the court to leave bonds set where they are. I would note that another condition of bond is also to ensure public safety. In this case, we have child victim. Um, Judge, so the state is requesting that the court leave the bonds set where they are and follow any bond conditions that are established. All right, pretrial, did you have any uh, contact with Ms. Peterson yourselves? Yes, we interviewed her prior to court. Okay. But we didn't put in a recommendation for her because she came in as a warrant. Although normally these charges we would not recommend pretrial supervision. All right, well, uh, the judge that reviewed the uh, arrest for warrant request set the uh, bond, uh, and uh, I can't say it's not uh, uh, totally unreasonable, but the bond schedule would call for a lower bond so I'm going to reduce the bond on the two Luma City's battery charges. The bond will be reduced to 5,000 apiece. And on the third count, which is a third degree felony, I'll reduce that bond in half to 2,500. So the bond will be reduced from 25,000 to 12,500. A condition of her bond is to be supervised by pretrial services with the following conditions. Absolutely no contact, direct or indirect, with the minor initials or PA uh, and his family. Uh, also to uh, uh, have no contact with anyone under the age of 18 unless related by blood or family, to not go where children normally gather, and uh, to take any prescribed medications, uh, to surrender any passport she has, and uh, one of the conditions of the initial bond uh, was to not have any devices that allow her internet access. That was one of the standard conditions at the beginning. I think I'll waive that condition. Thank you. That's as, like long as, uh, as long as she's not going to uh, post any photographs of herself to anyone. And uh, so I'm going to have her supervised when she posts bond. Again, one of the key uh, in conditions above and beyond the no contact is to take any medications that she is to be prescribed 
I mean, she uh, report by phone to pre-trial services uh, for the for uh, the yeah. first thirty days or so. For the first thirty the days, uh, given uh, given the situation uh, that's been explained to me, um, she could uh, report by phone after she makes the initial uh, orientation <coughs> meeting with them. Okay. Thank you. Sir. All right. So, uh, deputy, would you give her a copy of the no contact order? Can I get your full name? Stephanie Peterson. How old are you? 27. And the highest grade of school that you finish? A bachelor's degree. All right. To count one, which is lewd lascivious battery, with a sexual act, where the victim is uh, as charged, correct? Yeah. As we get one Now, yeah, whether they can be 12 years of age or older, but less than 16 years of age. Count one is a second degree felony with a maximum penalty of 15 years in state prison and or a $10,000 fine. To that charge, how would you like to plead? I'm sorry, I only accept guilty pleas on sex cases. <coughs> I apologize. I should have told you that up front. I don't accept a no contest plea. And there's a reason why. A component of any sentence is treatment. And the component of treatment is admitting you did what you did. If they plead no contest here, they go to treatment and they don't want to admit anything and then we end up with a mess. So you want to talk to her about that before you go forward? Okay. To that charge, how do you want to plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty. And then to count three of the information, which is uh, transmission of material which is harmful to minors by electronic device that is a uh, third degree felony with a, a maximum penalty of five years in state prison and or a thousand dollar fine how do you want to be guilty not or not guilty guilty are you entering the pleas of guilty freely and voluntarily yes did anybody threaten you force you or coerce you into entering, entering the plea no. did anybody promise you anything in exchange for your plea are you now under the influence of any alcoholic beverages or controlled substances? No. Are you under the care of a psychiatrist, psychologist, or taking any psychotropic medication at this time? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, have you taken your medications as prescribed? Yes. Do you have a clear understanding of what's happening here? Yes. In your own words, why don't you tell me what you think you're doing here? Just, okay, uh, pleading guilty for the two counts. And for the charge? Yeah. You understand that there will not be a trial of any kind? Yes. Yeah. And that the only thing that remains will be a sentencing proceeding. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. According to the score sheet that has been handed to me by your lawyer, um, the uh, minimal sentence uh, that the court could consider is 120 months, 119 <coughs> months in state prison. That's just uh, almost one month shy of <coughs> 10 years, but with a downward departure. You know, that's not the uh, score sheet that that's the one you depend on me. I'm sorry about that. I'm reading the points. 119 points. Um, the, the months is 68 months. Is that basically eight months over five years? That's the lowest permissible sentence if the court finds no reason to downward depart. You understand that? Yes. Yeah. I wish with every part of me I didn't have this sinister disorder. I wish I had been making rational decisions my whole life and that I had never hurt anyone. I wish I could make it clear how regretful I am for what has occurred. If I could say one thing to the victim, it would have to be that I'm sorry. Two words used too often without much meaning, but I can honestly say with everything in my heart that I mean it to its truest definition. The definition of sorry is feeling distress, especially through sympathy with someone else's misfortune. It's all a huge misfortune what has happened, and I hope I will be able to make things right through staying on my medication and attending regular therapy. I owe it to the victim to do the right thing from here on out. The amount of remorse I feel for what has happened has ne will never be explained well enough through words. 
There isn't a day that goes by that I don't wish I could change what happened, that I didn't affect someone's future the way I did. Teaching was the most meaningful thing in my life, and it was all I ever wanted to do growing up. Knowing I was in a position of power and misused that power to negatively influence one's life is a morbid thought I have to think about all day, every day. Sorry doesn't even begin to sum up my emotions. I know my actions are unforgivable by most, and I just wish I could express to them the amount of suffering I've placed on myself for what I've done. I could handle the notion of ruining my own life, but knowing I've hurt someone, someone else is something I will never forgive myself for. I use every day I have been given as, since as a living amends. I help wherever possible, be it at home, in the workplace, or in the public. I make myself get up each and every day and try to accomplish whatever I can because I know I owe to society to be the best me I can. I hope that with whatever punishment I am given for my wrongdoings, I can continue moder monitoring my medications, attend therapy and support groups, and continue working so that I'm being a useful member of society. For the rest of my life, I will be closely monitored for the actions I have committed, and rightfully so. I know there is a price to pay for what I have done, and I'm willing to accept that. Living what is now my history will be the hardest thing I'll ever have to do. Knowing I became a person for a period of time that makes it look hard to look in the mirror every day will never leave me. I just want everyone to know my, appear my apologies are the sincerest thing I've ever felt, and I will continue to be sorry until the day I die. I guess it's true what they say, the difference between brilliance and, and madness is the line is so blurred because you're so smart, and then you do the most insane of acts. On count one of the information, which is lewd, lascivious, battery, the sexual acts with a uh, person greater than 12 years of age but less than 16, I will adjudicate you guilty and sentence you to the custody of the Florida Department of Corrections for a period of 36 months. That will be followed by two years of community control. That will be sex offender community control, followed by um, five years on sex offender probation. How much credit does the defendant have? She has two days. I will give you credit for two days. On count three, and uh, transmission of materials which are harmful to minors by an electronic device, I'll adjudicate you guilty and sentence you to the time that you have already served. I will also, as part of the uh, community control and probation, will be sex offender, community control and sex offender probation. 